you to everybody who's in the stream and everybody who's going to be watching this on YouTube. Um, first and foremost, thank you guys for 10,000 subscribers on YouTube. Everybody in the stream that hasn't heard, we hit 10,000 subscribers on YouTube, and that is fucking phenomenal. We're the first DOA content creation channel on YouTube. We're the first DOA content creation channel on YouTube that hit that many subscribers, so I want to thank you guys for that. Really awesome of you guys to support the channel so much, and hopefully we can go for 20,000. Um, obviously, I've been branching off and doing other content. I've been playing other games for fun, um, and I've been I'm gonna be streaming more stuff as the time goes, as the time allows, and as time goes on. But anyways, back to the discussion. Essentially, t uh, first and foremost, in the background, we have a DOA four tournament match between Rakuto and Alan Paris from back in the day. Uh, two players who are still around, but they're not. Um, Rakuto doesn't really play DOA anymore, as you guys I'm sure know. And did Alan Paris is still in the community, but he goes by Lucky Loops on PC. But um, thanks for all the guys, everybody following and things like that. So essentially, I wanted to have a discussion with you guys in the stream as well as the people on YouTube about the current state of DOA. Um, you know, there's no, we can't sugarcoat this shit, guys. Like, that's one thing that I'm not going to do, and I, I hope that you guys don't expect me to do that because I've never done that and I never will. Um, the current state of DOA is, is a sad one. <clears throat> it, the current state of DOA is a sad one. I mean, you know, DOA 6 came out literally yet less than a year ago. It's coming up on a year now. Um, DOA was originally, originally supposed to come out February 15th of 2019, and it ended up getting pushed to March 1st. Um, so we're coming up on that year now. We had a pretty good year, I'd say, the first year in terms of certain specific things. Maybe not necessarily content and maybe not necessarily... Um, you know, the game itself, maybe the game wasn't that great, but we had a pretty good world tour. We didn't have that many people come out for it, but um, other than the grand finals, I thought that the tour was really well ran. I thought that, you know, the commentary, obviously Mean Shade were the main commentators, and even the commentators they had for the other events, I feel, was really, really on point. They had Chosen One, Apprentice, um, you know, the, the, the world tour for what it was, I mean, you guys got to understand this is DOA. It's never going to be as big as Tekken. It's never going to be as big as another Realm game. It's, it's, it's only always going to be DOA. However, we can always hope for the best for the game, you know, going into the future, obviously. You know, we all want the best for DOA. We all want more people to play it. We all want this game to be bigger. But th the thing is, I'm a realist. And, you know, when I say I'm a realist, I already know what, what we're going to get with DOA. Granted, I wanted a better DOA game with this game here, with DOA 6. But, um, you know... You have we have to be realistic, and I think that that's something that we don't do often in the DOA community. Um, we we really often compare our game to other games. I really miss this shit right here, by the way, the lobby system. We often compare DOA to other games like Tekken, and you know all these other games, and it's like we can't really do that because DOA was never a game that could be compared to those games as far as you know the amount of people that played it. I mean, you know, even going back to like the DOA two days, I mean, there weren't that many fucking fighting games that were online back in that time period. So, you know, DOA had the ability to compete with those other games, but as time went on, obviously, you know, DOA four ended up dying out and then a lot of DOA players went and started playing Street Fighter and Soul Calibur. Um, you know, and a lot of people don't know this, but Tekken for a while there, Tekken was completely dead. Like in Tekken Tag Tournament 2, I was watching an interview and pretty much Tekken was dead. Like, they weren't even going to do Tekken 7. They kind of took a chance on Tekken 7. <coughs> and it ended up being a fucking huge game, obviously. But, you know, Tekken, Tekken Tag was was it for deal, uh, was for was it for Tekken. And um, they took a chance on Tekken 7. It turned out to be a really great fucking game. And obviously, Tekken is thriving. It's one of the, the you know, the most popular fighting games in the world right now. But... Um, you know, not to say that DOA can't overcome its bad, you know, its its bad times and shit like that. Because I mean, again, look at Tekken. Tekken Tag Two killed the franchise. Like even Harada, everybody said that said the same thing. But I think that DOA right now, and I put up a tweet yesterday, and I said DOA needs a revamp. And people were commenting all these crazy ideas on there. Oh, DOA needs this. DOA needs that. Like no, DOA needs an entire revamp. Like. I honestly wish we could go back to before DOA 6 was out, and I wish that they waited another year and DOA was coming out next month. Think about everything that they could have achieved with DOA if they would have waited another year and pushed the game out of 2020. You know, some fans were so selfish, and they were like, oh, man, you know, we want the game now. This is BS. Put the game out. And as a result of them waiting 15 days to put the game out, look at the unfinished fucking product that we got. 
Look at all the pressure that Team Ninja was under with DOA in general. Look at all the games. Tekken 7 was doing its fucking thing. You know what I mean? You had all these other great games. Obviously, Mortal Kombat to come out with one every two years. They come out with another own game. Soul Calibur was dropping. You know what I mean? Team Ninja was under a lot of pressure, but I feel like um, DOA could have waited another year, and I feel like the game could have been fucking exceptional. You know, if you look at DOA 6 as a game, the art style of it, you know, the graphics, they didn't do anything wrong on those fronts. The graphics and the gameplay and everything was fucking phenomenal, okay? The problem with DOA is that it doesn't offer you shit. The problem with DOA 6 is that it doesn't offer you dick. You know what I mean? Like, what is DOA 6 really offering people in terms of coming in and picking this game up? Granted, last year we had the DOA 6 World Championship, and there was a lot of people, a lot of people may not know this, but there was a lot of people who started playing DOA because of that World Championship and because they wanted to compete and try to win some money. 2020 comes, it's February, final rounds approaching, winner brawls here. We have no World Championship announcement, so what does that mean? You know what I mean? What does that mean now? People are not going to play DOA. I can tell you guys, five top players on one hand, that are not playing DOA right now and are not going to play it because there's no World Championship. Rakuto wasn't even playing this game at all. Except for the fact that there was a world championship. That was the only reason why he was playing this game. Because Rakuto openly does not like Dead or Alive 6. Um, I think DOA, DOA 6 needs a lot of help. And I kind of wanted to have this discussion with a lot of you guys in the chat. Just to kind of see what you guys think DOA 6 needs. And everybody on YouTube as well. I know I make videos like this kind of often. But at this point, like we have to realize like this game is, is fucking... It's sad to say it, but it's, it's not... It's not thriving. It's not doing well in any kind of sense. Like, I played it, you know, yesterday. You guys, a couple of you guys were in the stream. And I'm sitting there and I'm like, dude, why am I playing this? If it's not the pure, sheer passion for the game, which is a big reason why we all play it. Why are we playing this game? There's no world championship right now. There's barely any content in the game. I mean, this is a year or two game at this point. And we're pretty much still, we pretty much have the same shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, we're getting reloaded characters from other fight from other doa games and you know it's it's like what is the point why are we going to continue to keep supporting this game you know like that's essentially a question that that i wanted to ask you guys and you know kind of see get you guys' opinion on why the fuck we're still playing this game you know what i mean shout out to the doa central and all these channels that uploaded all this cool gameplay for us to watch or hopefully it keeps kind of going in order with different gameplay here but um you said because we're stupid? I mean, realistically, like, I'm going to tell you guys why I play DOA. And, you know, you guys take this how you want. I'm going to tell you guys why I play DOA. I play this game because I'm not a gamer anymore. My, you know, obviously I'll go back and I'll play classic games and stuff in my childhood. And I'll make videos of it, like Bloody Roar and stuff. But you guys very rarely ever see me play other games. You don't really see me play shit else. If you guys are in my stream, you know that I don't really play anything else other than DOA. And I've come to terms, especially these last couple of years since I started my career and, you know, I had my daughter and stuff. Yo, Blackbeard, thanks for the sub, man. I appreciate it, bro. Um, I've come to terms that I don't really care to be a gamer anymore. I kind of just like playing DOA because it's, it's you know, it's been with me since I was a kid. And, you know, it's a childhood fighting. It's a childhood game for me. Um... But I've come to terms that I don't play DOA because I like games. I, I play DOA because I love DOA. And I don't really care to to adventure out and play other stuff. Like, I don't care to venture out and play Tekken. I don't care to venture out and play this Grand Blue versus game. I have no desire to play these games. I love DOA. And that's honestly the only reason why I still own any gaming consoles is because of Dead or Alive. Um, and it saddens me as someone who, you know, puts so much time into this game and, you know, content creation and streaming and, you know, coming up with tech and making videos and stuff, you know, it really pains me. Like it sincerely fucking hurts that this is the state of our game. Like look at all these fighting games that are just thriving right now. And DOA is just not really doing shit. Like, like we got to be honest. I mean, without our honesty, DOA is never going to be better. So we have to be honest as players in the community and people who support this game. <clears throat> shit. I see a lot of people who are okay with DOA 6. I see a lot of people who are fine with this fucking game. And I don't know why. 
Like, shit, I can tell you guys that the people who make this game are probably not happy with the game. The people who work for Team Ninja are probably not happy with the game. But they can't come out and say, oh, we don't like DOA 6. Like, they can't do that as employees. You know what I mean? But, I mean, like, let's, let's just let's look at the current state of the game, right? Let's look at what we have. What's What the fuck is all this random shit that's popping up? This is not DOA related. I'm trying to watch DOA videos right now. And I need like a long video that I can put on. Bam, perfect. We'll watch this one. Evil Dancer versus Down Paris is a throwback. Um, so, you know, again, shout out to Freestep Dodge for uploading all these gameplays. What do we got? With DOA 6. Right now we don't have a world championship. So there's no reason to really travel and compete for the game. Look at most other games. You know, don't get me wrong. DOA can always be worse. Look at Virtual Fighter. Virtual Fighter is fucking dead. It's literally fucking dead. Like, Virtual Fighter is non-existent right now. Shit could always be worse. It could be better, but shit could always be worse, right? But DOA needs a lot of shit that it doesn't have. You know, like, as a matter of fact, I want to actually go before we watch this. Hold on a second. I'm going to go on my profile here. And I want you guys to see this tweet that I put up. So I said DOA 6 needs a revamp, right? I said DOA 6 needs a revamp. And this is the, the response. I'm going to read you guys some of the responses that I got on this tweet. People were asking me what I think needs to change a lot. Of, and this this was a good tweet here. Um it says, this game needs to give more per more per purchasable content like taunts, artworks, characters, interactions, voice lines, um, stages, different modes for stages like, you know, um, morning, afternoon, night, not to mention stages need to be at least, at least over 25 stages. All stages are welcome. And if you look, shut up about my damn light mode. Shut the hell up. Um, this, is a serious mo this is a serious moment right now. Why the fuck don't we have that? This is shit. Now, hold on a second. I want to highlight something that we can have that we just don't have. The morning and the night and the afternoon shit for stages is 100%. All they have to do is change the fucking lighting, bro. That's it. There's no reason why that can't be in the game. That doesn't make any sense. If you're not going to give us stages, at least give us the stages we have but with variations. A couple of fighting games have done that. A couple of games have done that. That's small. You don't even need to make new stages. You don't even need to... It's honestly... All right, guys, be realistic. If they came out with a pack that included all the stages we already have with different lighting, with, with you know, with snow and rain and stuff, I guarantee you that would be way cheaper than making whole new fucking stages. Seriously. And I'm sure that people would be happy with that. Don't get me wrong. There's always going to be those people that bitch about stuff, but we would fucking... I would be happy with that shit. You know what I'm saying? Um, let's see what else people are saying. People are saying they agree with it. Revert sidestep have Oki. Now, this is a system thing. You know, and I do agree. I think that, you know, the sidestep should be took took back to when it didn't require any meter. Um, and Oki. There's no Oki in the game right now. That's a system thing. I feel like the only thing with the whole thing we're talking about the system is I feel like that's not really going to bring new people in. I feel like that's going to satisfy the people that are playing. And, you know, from a marketing standpoint... It's not really smart because that's not going to get new people playing. Them putting a the sidestep back and having Oki in the game, honestly, seriously, it's not going to get new people playing the game. We need to appeal to people from a casual standpoint before they start looking at competitive shit, which means give them casual stuff that's going to get them into the game. Better costumes, better stages, characters, stuff like that. <clears throat> Let's see. Well, it hasn't been a year yet, so in March we may get a revamp. Come on, guys. Seriously, how many of you guys think that March is going to roll around and we're going to get a revamp? Seriously. I want to know how many of you guys think that. Seriously, because it's not going to fucking happen. Okay? It's not going to fucking happen. 100% the game has become stale. Ground game and other adjustments are highly needed. I really hope they add more stages soon. They don't lack. Guys, this game isn't even a year old, man. The excuse is always it costs money, but at the same time they keep throwing out these dog shit season passes that everyone, that not, not everyone's gonna get. I agree. Um, they need to have tag battle. See, this is stuff that I legitimately don't think is gonna help. Tag battle, man. Tag battle's not gonna fucking no. Tag battle's not gonna help anything, dude. I sincerely don't think tag battle's gonna help. Um, so yeah, you know, 
Back to the video here. I don't think tag is going to help dick, but that's just me. I don't think tag is going to help us with fucking anything in this game. Um, but, um, yeah, so, you know, we need, we need better shit. Like, because honestly, if they put better casual stuff in the game, not only does that appeal to us, the, you know, the competitive players and the people who grind this game, but it's going to appeal to other people. Like, you know, not only they didn't bring people to the series, they managed to alienate hardcore DOA players. I do agree with that for sure. Um, you know, if they wanted to obtain new players to the game, they did a terrible job of doing it because the people who were playing it are, are not playing it anymore. You know what I'm saying? The, the old DOA players aren't even fucking playing the game anymore. So... There's a lot of shit, man. There's a lot of shit that we can sit here and we can discuss this and talk about this forever. But um, in reality, man, I think that what we got is what we got. How many of you guys in the chat and on YouTube think that, that, that this is as good as DOA 6 is going to get? How many of you guys think that this game is, is what it's going to be? Personally, me, I don't imagine, from because this, this is looking at this from a business standpoint, I can't imagine them dumping any more money into this game. That's just my personal opinion. I cannot imagine them dumping any more money into this game. I think that what we got is what we're going to have. And it's, again, guys, it pains me so much as someone who loves this fucking game so much, man. Like, like seriously, I love Dead or Alive, bro. I've been playing this game <coughs> probably longer than 95% of the people that are playing it now have. Excuse me, I'm a little sick, but... You know, I think that what we got is what we're going to have. And it saddens me because all these other games, man. Like, it must be so awesome to be a Tekken player. Like, it must be so awesome to be a Tekken player knowing that you're going to have all this crazy content coming out. And all these people play this game and they stream this game and they love this game. And it must be... all God damn, that did a lot of fucking damage. Um, it must be awesome knowing that a Tekken 8 is coming. You know what I'm saying? Like, guys, Tekken 8 is coming. Whether they're going to fuck that game up or not, we don't know. But Tekken 8 is coming. And when it comes, it's going to be a fucking problem. You know what I'm saying? Can we say the same thing about DOA 6 Ultimate or Dead or Alive 7? Like, when DOA 7 comes, it's going to be a it's gonna be a doozy. It's going to be great. You can't really fucking say that. Shit, even the storyline, bro. Guys, if you go back and look at the storyline in DOA 2U and DOA 3 and DOA 4, and then you look at the storyline in 5, and you're kind of like, I just a little weird. And then 6, the storyline was fucking atrocious, bro. Come on, guys. The storyline in 6 was out of pocket, bro. It was so uninteresting, I didn't even finish the shit. That shit was so whack, bro. And DOA storyline was always kind of like it was kind of sick, bro. If you go back and look at the cutscenes and like Hayate and fucking Ayane infiltrating the fucking DOA tech, like, bro, that shit was fucking fire, bro. And then you got this weird ass fucking storyline, fucking Mila fucking working in a diner and Tina showing up. Like, that shit was so corny, bro. Like, DOA actually... What are these combos? DOA had a sick-ass fucking story. Alpha, dude. Alpha was fucking sick. She was this fucking crazy-ass boss character. It was, like, kind of creepy, like, low-key. But it was interesting. And now it's just like, what is going on, bro? Like... Since I want to show you guys some shit real quick. Hold on. We're going to we're going to take a break from this. I want to show you guys some shit real quick. I'm going to play this, but I'm going to mute the music because if I don't mute it then I'm going to get a copyright strike. So we're going to mute this. This is that no no no. There's a HD version on here because I found it before. I think is this it? Yeah, we're going to mute this. So like we we'll play this in the background. This is the ending of DOA 4. You know, remember the old storyline where fucking, you know, uh, fucking somebody killed Helena's mom and fucking all that shit? Like, bro, that shit was all so fire, man. Like, look at this. Like, th even though this is a CGI cutscene or whatever, this is a cutscene. We don't even get this anymore. That was an evil bitch right there, bro. Like, DOA was actually like, it, it used to pull you in. It was gripping. Like, look at how sick this is. This shit is gone, bro. This shit is gone. We got fucking Hayate flying in helicopters now. A ninja that can teleport anywhere in the fucking world that he wants. 
sitting in a helicopter next to fucking Zack. You know what I mean? In the song, I wish I could play the Aerosmith song playing right now, but I don't want to get hit with a copyright strike, but like... Like, look at this. Hayate is fucking people up. This man got his sword out. He's cutting people up, bro. Like, Ayane and Hayate are going ham. I mean, DOA 5 was pretty dark. Bro, Hayate was flying in a helicopter for uh, video games. Hayate was flying in a helicopter video games. He's a ninja. He can teleport anywhere. Why is he in a helicopter? Something ain't making any sense. You know what I mean? Oh, this was so fucking fire, man. Five was crazy, bro. Five story. I will not agree with anyone who stands up for DOA five story. I'm sorry. I'm not going to stand for it. <laughs> you said five was dark. The game had no color. Oh, yeah. I'll give you that. Five was dark. The story was dark because the fucking colors were so goddamn bland. You know what I mean? But the storyline was was fucking wild, man. Can you guys imagine if Itagaki was still around, bro? Seriously, I actually want to show you guys some of Itagaki's Facebook posts. We're going to go on Itagaki's Facebook, and I'm going to read you guys some of his shit. He was literally like, who the fuck is Phase 4? Phase 4 didn't exist in my DOA. Even Dimensions was good, man. Shit, DOA Dimensions in terms of story was the best DOA, in my opinion. In terms of story, DOA Dimensions was the best in my opinion. They did a lot of shit with that fucking game, man. <clears throat> to this day, I haven't been able to play Dimensions. If you got a computer, bro, just download the uh, torrent for it, man. Download the, um... Download the, uh... What you call it? The fucking emulator. This is a fucking mobile. This is a portable game, bro, in a system that came out in 2011, for God's sake. I don't know who was playing, but they were ass. But that's not why I'm showing you guys this video. <laughs> like, this still felt like a DOA storyline here. You know what I mean? What's up, Vigil and Siegel? Touch screen move list. Uh-oh. I never used that bullshit. That shit was so... Bro, the fact that you could do Azuna drops in Raijin's... Bro, you could do the Raijin from hitting one button. That shit was crazy. They should have never allowed that shit online. <laughs> People were online just doing Raijin's. Yeah, the tag in this game is weird. A goddamn mobile game, man. What the? What the fuck kind of stun was that? I don't think that shit made it to the final game. This is a really good trailer. Fight other players' avatars! Look at the snowman back there. Ooh, ooh, ooh. That was not the combo. You guys get the idea, though. Alright, so, hold on a second. Let's, uh, let's go to Facebook real quick. 
I'm gonna go to Tomonobu. Tom Onobu Itagaki. So I was looking into Itagaki's Facebook posts and shit. And um, you'll have people that get on here and they'll ask him questions. Um, they'll ask him all kinds of questions and he'll answer. Sometimes I gotta translate these shits. I don't know what this man be talking about. Man, Devil's Third was a poop show, wasn't it? That game was terrible. Devil's Third was fucking crazy. Let's see here. Let's try to go down. See if we can find some information on Itagaki's Twitter here. Sometimes he answers, sometimes he won't. Um, sometimes he won't answer, but a lot of the times he does. Let me see if there's any comments in here. There was a lot of shit in one of these posts, and I had to go through it. By the way, he says that he's back, so I don't know what that means. He's not going to be working on any DOA stuff. Guys, please stop letting people mislead you guys into thinking Itagaki is going to come back to Team Ninja. Okay, please cut that shit out. People were asking this man, why? how the fuck was DOA 3 so advanced? If you guys go back and look at DOA 3, that game came out in 2001, which means that it was developed. Oh, that's your post? It, that means that the game was developed in like 1999, 2000, right? He literally said that the reason why DOA 3 looks so good is because he was, he was close friends with the chief architect of the original Xbox. That's why I can achieve DOA 3. He pretty much said... That DOA 3 looks so... It was so groundbreaking because he was friends with the chief architect of the fucking system. Like, that's power right there, bro. Oh, this was so fucking shady, bro. Somebody made a post and said, Hey, do you play Dead or Alive 6? He said, Sorry, I didn't. By the way, I plan to buy another Xbox 360 to play my lovely DOA 4. <laughs> bro, that's so much shade, bro. What's up, Akira? This man just threw mad shade just now. Like, nah, but I'll, I'll play DOA 4, though. I got to find this one about Phase 4, though. I wonder, dude. I wonder if... <clears throat> I wonder if he... um, What would happen if this man was still working on DOA, though? What's up, Rantu? Hopefully there's no porno on here. I don't want to get banned. Man, Itagaki has a lot of fans, bro. Itagaki has a lot of fans. He has a lot of people that, um, that write to him and shit. He'll like a lot of this stuff, but he won't answer a lot of it. Like, this is a pretty interesting post. Somebody asked him. <clears throat> they said, Itagaki, I have a question about your original plan story for DOA 5. According to what I've read on the DOA wiki, Kasumi and Ayani were going to meet in a snowy field where Kasumi thinks Ayani has come to kill her. But she had actually come to warn Kasumi that their home village had been destroyed by Doa Tech. Now headed by Miyako. Does this mean Kasumi and Ayani would have been allies? Also, what part would Helena have played in the story and how would the story have played out? So essentially, this shit's cool because he's telling you what his ideas were going to be for DOA 6. And that, it's actually, I mean, DOA 5. It's actually pretty interesting. First of all, thanks for your understandings. I'll speak about only the part what I should speak because I don't want to take the pleasure of the imagination away from DOA fans. Man, he doesn't like DOA right now. Yes, Kasumi and Iani would ally themselves to exterminate Doa Tech Japan and Doa Tech HK. The enemy of my enemy is my friend. The headquarters of Doa Tech and Tri Tower were destroyed, but Doa Tech Japan still exists and Miyako sees his power. She has been waiting for the day to come. Miyako's daughter, Kokoro, doesn't know her severe destiny yet. She ends up knowing it in DOA 5 story mode. Helena had totally accomplished her purpose and she has been. And she was completely exhausted, so she would have been given a rest. So, DOA 5 storyline would not have fucking happened, essentially. Like, that shit wouldn't have happened. When the Tri Tower collapsed, Kasumi tried to rescue Helena, but Ayane detained Kasumi calmly. Because Helena and Doatek are their enemy, and Ayane's purpose already had been accomplished. DOA Extreme has no purpose in the DOA's, essentially... That is way more interesting. It is way more interesting. Let me bring this other one up that Blackberry just sent me. Hold on. Okay, here it is. Here it is. Yo, this shit's crazy. This shit's crazy. So, Itagaki says, guys, thanks for subbing, um, Scar Hurricane. I appreciate you, man. This is interesting right here. He says, this was in May 24th Let's of 2019, so a little guys. over... Um, Almost a year now. A couple more months will be a year. 
Guys, there is various misunderstanding about Kasumi Alpha and Alpha 152, so I'll summarize it. This summary is Collector's Edition Saving, Alpha Project, Clone Soldier Project, and Doa Tech. There was Epsilon Project at the same time. So Project Epsilon, we already know about Project Epsilon. Epsilon Project, another project, another perfect soldier project in Doa Tech. It was planned to remodel human body and strengthen it. The first base body was Hayate. Obviously, because of the, everything with Ayn and Hayate and shit. Kasumi Alpha, proper name was Alpha 01. The first version was produced by Alpha Project. Alpha 152, and the last and perfect version of Alpha series clone, the last boss of DOA 4. So, all those clones, Alpha 152 was the boss that we, we played in uh, DOA 4 at the end. She was the final version. Epsilon, by name of Epsilon 01, the base body was Hayate. Do you remember that Helena called Ayn as Epsilon? Epsilon project failed and Hayate was thrown away in a German forest. Hayate had lost his memories. Hitomi's father found Hayate, called him Ayn, and taught him karate, which obviously makes sense to the storyline phase four that doesn't exist in the doa universe that i drew so can you guys imagine how different dead or alive would be if itagaki would have kept working on it phase four wouldn't exist obviously doa5 would have been focused a lot more on kokoro and if you really think about it kokoro really never got a chance to shine like, he pretty much just said Phase 4 would have never fucking existed. That shit is, is, wouldn't have happened. I think DOA would have been fucking crazy if he would have kept working on it. A little something that I'm going to share with you guys is that um, when I used to, when I was hanging out with Tom Lee and Master, and, um, you know, obviously they work for Team Ninja, Tom Lee has been with Team Ninja since Dead or Alive 2 on the Dreamcast. So, he's been around for a while. He said working for Itagaki, and this is his words, he said working for Itagaki was like working in the military. He said that he was so structured and so strict, he would just be snapping and shit because shit wasn't right and shit wasn't perfect. That passion is no longer in DOA. That passion does not exist. And maybe it's because they don't have a choice because they can't have that passion, but he said it was literally like working for a drill sergeant. Crazy, man crazy shit to imagine.